from the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California, welcome to the Hour of Power with Robert Schuler. Now, in our 25th year of broadcasting, the face and voice of positive Christianity to the world, together with churches uniting in global mission. Today on the Hour of Power, all of the promises of God in Christ are yes. God never gives you a no. If it's impossible, he'll say yes, but. Dr. Catherine Crozier, world-renowned organist, celebrates her 80th birthday at the Great Cathedral Organ. Paul McNeff leads the Cathedral Choir in Natalie Sleeth's uplifting anthem, Joy in the Morning. And sightless Ken Medeba ends today's program with his own composition. Flying like an eagle, running and not being weary, walking and not painting at all. Dr. Schuler's special guest is scientist and inventor of the MRI, Dr. Raymond Demadian. I made the experiments with cancers put into tiny test tubes and normal tissue and showed that these radio signals were indeed different and that we now had radio signals as the first step that we could fashion scanners around to hunt down these radio signals to detect cancer. And that was the beginning of the MRI. Today on the Hour of Power. Good morning. morning. There's never, ever in human history been an hour like you are about to experience. And that's the truth. For all of us in this room, in this hour, have never been together before. I mean, I've been here with you, but Dr. Davidian wasn't with me at that time. And there are different people here mixing in this prayerful assembly. Things are going to happen, good things. Be open. Get ready. Achieve the power to seize the moment and grab the light when God sends it into your imagination. So, Lord, this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. For you are our Lord. And we sense the excitement of energy in this place. Your spirit. Hallelujah. Amen.
hear these words of encouragement, which we find in Isaiah chapter 55. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Why do you spend your money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow comes down from heaven and not return there, but water the earth, make it bring forth the bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hill shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. May God add his blessings to the reading of this word. A very warm welcome to you this morning. In the midst of the cold winter months, this service from the Crystal Cathedral provides sunshine and joy for your soul. We're so glad you've tuned in. Once again, I invite you to appreciate the strength and sheer beauty of this porcelain eagle. Dr. Schuler's exclusive gift to all 1994 Eagles Club members. You still have the opportunity today to join the Eagles Club in 1994. By doing so, you'll be helping this ministry to continue to soar and meet the commitment that God has given to us to do more in 94 than we've ever done before. When you make your prayerful commitment to give a $50 gift to this ministry each month in 1994, you'll then receive this carefully crafted Eagles Club gift. Just look at this grand porcelain eagle in detail. The head, the eye, the wing, the fan tail, the gripping talons. Wow! This is truly a unique design specifically for this ministry. 
Your eagle is handcrafted with the boldness and realism that captures every detail of this God's creature. You'll be pleased to display this elegant three-dimensional masterpiece in your home with your finest or most treasured collectibles. You can become a member of the 1994 Eagles Club today and receive this striking porcelain eagle by making your pledge of $50 a month for 12 months during 1994. That's a total gift equaling $600. You'll be pleased to know that you are starting this new year with a commitment to help spread the word of God around the world. The address is Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. In Canada, write Robert Schuler, Post Office, Box 9050, Surrey, British Columbia. If you'll write the words Eagles Club on the outside of your envelope, it will help us to expedite the careful shipment of your prized porcelain piece. Or if you prefer, Dr. Schuler has a toll-free Eagles Club enrollment line that you may call. 1-800-94-USOAR. That's 1-800-94-U-S-O-A-R. I'll return later and explain how you may receive a free printed copy of Dr. Schuler's morning message. But now, let's return to the celebration of worship. Welcome, Catherine Crozier. You're going to have your 80th birthday this week. And you're with us this morning, one of the truly leading organists of this century, world-renowned performer. We are very honored to have you.
No honor is ever bestowed by the President of the United States that could mean more to someone than if the President calls you to the White House and gives you what he did to my guest, Dr. Davidian. Dr. Raymond Damadian was given the National Medal of Technology Award in a ceremony in the White House, and it was the beginning of the recognition that he's continuing to receive. There is the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Thomas Edison is in it, as is Eli Whitney, Samuel Morse, Orville and Wilbur Wright, Alexander Graham Bell, Cyrus McCormick, Henry Ford, Edwin Land, Igor Sikorsky, George Eastman, Charles Goodyear, and now Dr. Raymond Damadian. I'm profoundly impressed with him, especially as I read the story of his life in this book called A Machine Called Indomitable. Now, this book was published a few years ago, and I just ran into it this week. I haven't finished reading it, but it is a classic story of a classic possibility thinker who grabs hold of a dream while it's still impossible and refuses to let go. And that true power of possibility thinking that focuses on solutions to problems and inventing something new and creative and sensational. I don't think you can find that power so evident in any person who doesn't have a profound, deep spiritual faith. And Dr. Demadian does. He's accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Uh, he carries the entire Holy Bible with him in his coat pocket on a computer. <laughs> I'll tell you, I urge you to go out and buy the book. The book is called A Machine Called Indomitable. And that's the name of the first MRI machine made and built. It's in the Smithsonian Institute today. I wish I had more time, but let's get started. You know, I've been reading about your corporation. It's former, I think. All of the first, my goodness, where are those papers? I don't know, 40 or 50 first. What is, does an inventor have a different kind of mind fix? Yeah, I suppose, out of sorts with everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first of all, you're an, a brilliantly well-educated medical doctor. And here you come up with the idea that what you were taught in medical school about the cell is wrong. And that everybody in this whole world in medicine and physiology has made a mistake in their analysis of the cell in the body. Now, that is a shocking, shocking concept to enter into the brain of an educated man. And you have proven that they were wrong, and the cell is something different than everybody had been taught that it was, right? Yes. Let me see. Uh, I've been in that the machine. The, the, you call it the MR. MRI. You, not in medicine, not in medical school, but you ran into an understanding that about 20 years before that moment, 
someone who discovered that every one of the atoms in the human body sends off a little, like, call it a radio signal. Billions of atoms in every body, right? Yes. The atoms of the nerves send different radio signals than the atoms of blood vessels. Yes. And, the, and those are different than the atoms of muscles. Yes. And that's different than the atoms of the joints. And bone different from cartilage. Is that true? Yes. When you hit that, you applied that to medicine. Thought if we could somehow make that work, we could see what's going on all through the body. If we could pick up the, all of these different messages, right? Yes. Well, that's the basis of MRI. Is that correct? Yes. Sort of. I'm going to quit while I'm still passing. <sighs> when did the idea really hit you? Well, I, <clears throat> as you were saying, I uh, was striking out on this new path on the physiology of the cell, and a colleague, Dr. Freeman Cope, called and asked if I'd like to take a moment to use this new technology, nuclear magnetic resonance, we otherwise called NMR, uh, to try to prove some aspects of my theory. And he had the loan of a machine at a small company in the outskirts of Pittsburgh uh, that would, where we could do these experiments. Now, he wanted to measure by NMR potassium on the inside of tissue, but he was fearful that there wasn't enough normally abundant potassium on the inside of tissue. And I thought I might be able to help him make the experiment work because I knew of a bacteria that I could get from the Dead Sea with 20 times the normal complement of potassium. So we agreed, we went to do the experiment. I grew the bacteria, he ran this complicated machine. And um, you put your stuff in the trunk of a car and had a lunch at a Holiday Inn coffee shop and then you did your thing. It's amazing. You gotta read the book, A Machine Called Indomitable. Fabulous. You gotta make a movie on it. It's terrific. But go ahead, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Well, we were successful, and uh, the next morning when we were at the Holiday Inn, I said to Freeman, I said, this technology is astonishing. It, uh, it's chemistry entirely by wireless electronics. You don't have to invade the sample. So if we could do what the chemist does on a small test tube of chloroform, we'd, go from one, we'd be able to go from one tissue to the next everywhere in the body and, and get the chemical analysis of the tissue, tell you whether something's benign or malignant, whether it's not as responding to drugs, and we should be able to spark an unprecedented revolution in medicine. Well, that was too much even for Freeman's fertile imagination, and he asked me how I'd go about it. He thought that in 10 years before we'd convince anybody that we weren't bordering on the fringes of lunacy. <laughs> and uh, I went back to uh, New York and grew up some rats with cancers in them because I thought the first way to be able to show this is to show that this radio signal in cancer tissue was different than the radio signal from normal tissue. And I drove back to the company and I prove that. I made the experiments with cancers put into tiny test tubes and normal tissue and showed that these radio signals were indeed different and that we now had radio signals as the first step that we could fashion scanners around to hunt down these radio signals to detect cancer and that was the beginning of the MRI. Oh, it's incredible. Wow. How many people here have ever had an MRI? I have. Wow. How many of these machines are there in the world today? About six or seven thousand worldwide. And where are we going with it? You are you're continuing to improve it almost on a month-by-month -month basis. Tell them what I saw in your place the other day. Well, we have, uh, <coughs> we have two things in focus that we want to change. One is that the MRI is too costly. We're not very happy that uh, something that we've created, 90% of the world's population can't afford to get into, so we want to fix that. The scanners up until now have been selling for about one and a half million dollars, and it costs the average patient a thousand dollars for a scan, and that's too much. <clears throat> In next month, we will be announcing a new scanner uh, that will be available for the first time with more capability than the other scanners for $650,000, and I intend to get that lower, so that'll be step one. Um,
The, the other thing is that uh, uh, anybody who's had an MRI knows that it's not a pleasant process. Um, people usually refer to it as the claustrophobic torpedo tube. And so we've set about to make one that's open. And uh, the new one that we have is open on four sides. And we've realized that that has allowed us to address another issue, which is we're very conscious of the fact that there is a rising need for uh, per, a, a, a highly efficient uh, detection technology for mammography, and that the existing technology, X-ray technology, isn't satisfactory. We believe that the MRI is the quintessence of a, of a machine that will do that. But we have to solve the cost issue. Because an X-ray mammogram costs $80 and an MRI $1,000. So with this new machine, um, because it's open on four sides, can be equipped with four beds, allowing the uh, patient uh, scanning couches to be preloaded so that we can sequence patients every five minutes, do 12 in an hour, and reduce the cost to about $80 a scan. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> And I, I think that the other attractive thing about it is that it eliminates the indignities that ladies have to go through with private parts having to be handled because <clears throat> they don't have to have the breast compressed between steel plates, first one and then the other. They can just come in their street clothes and, and get up on the scanner and be scanned in five minutes and, uh, without anybody attending to it. I saw something that I couldn't believe. You said, look at that. And you had what I thought was a movie video on the screen. It looked like I was looking at a, a, the calf and the knee and the upper thigh, or the lower thigh of a human being. It was moving. Was that uh, drawn by an artist? No, with a new open scanner now, um, we can make movies, full-fledged movies of all the body parts. So you can see the knee in action, you can see the cervical spine in action, you can see the shoulder in action. And so you can judge function, uh, which we couldn't do before. And when I looked at it, you could see the difference between nerves and blood vessels and bones and cartilage and joints and muscle tissue and skin. I am so thankful to God for you. Oh. Do you know... You were picked by him. This is, I think, one of the greatest things to happen in the history of medicine. Probably the greatest thing ever to happen in the history of medicine. And God wanted to prove that he is still the ultimate scientist. And he picked a Christian like you. You got a word to tell to people about your faith? It kept you alive. Your partner committed suicide. Well, um, Dr. Koch, who I'd done the original experiments with, the uh, life of a scientist, particularly a pioneer, can be, like many other things in life, tough and painful, and a lot of toil. And, and Dr. Koch, even though he was a direct descendant of the Puritans who founded this country, didn't have the Lord. He, he had only the way of the world, which is a way of sorrow. And... Um, <clears throat> So we didn't have what the scriptures promised where Jesus said that I have spoken that the joy I have may remain in you and that your life may be full of joy. And that's what sustained us through these trials, but Freeman didn't have that. You became a Christian, committed your life to Christ in the Billy Graham crusade in Madison Square Garden. In the last row of the garden. The last? The one I like to think that was closest to heaven. <laughs> was that in 1957? Yes. Interesting, because I attended that crusade. I may have been there the same night, because I preached on the, that Sunday at the Marble Collegiate Church for Norman Peale. Wow. How old were you when you went forward at that Billy Graham crusade? A teenager? Twenty. Twenty. And you've lived by the faith. Right? Yes, sir. With some wanderings in between. <laughs> but you carry the whole Bible in here. Well, I... May I, I ask you to show them what you showed me downstairs? 
this man, you know, is the greatest author, is the greatest technologist in this country. Show me the whole Bible. Yeah, well, let's I'll, see the software. Suppose I get you John 3:16 here. Okay? okay. I know that by heart, so I can tell you if the computer is wrong. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It's fantastic. Can you show us that little piece of software? That's it. The entire Holy Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, Hey, right where I need it. But will the day come, you think, yeah, over here. <laughs> will the day come, you think, when x-rays are going to be a thing of the past? We think so. And on the table that you showed me, a surgeon can take the, what do you call it? That piece of... Laparoscopy. That laparoscopy tools, yeah. Just a little tick in here, and he enters the body with it. And... He can be watching what's happening on the screen. On the screen, so he can see: is it getting close to a blood vessel that he doesn't want to hit, right? Yes. Or yeah. He, he can, can perform surgery inside the MRI machine. Surgery inside the MRI machine. That's the wave of the future. Thank you, Dr. Debatian. God bless you. Hey, positive thinking really does work. I'm a survivor. I mean, two days ago, I was in Cleveland, Ohio, when it reached a high of two above zero. <laughs> and the night before, I was in Pittsburgh. Coldest weather they've had in 10 years. It started off last Monday in Boston. Tons of snow in Main Street. And here I am in California, and it's about 80 degrees, and I'm surviving. <laughs> you know, in fine print in the contract that I signed with Rupert Murdoch's Harper Collins Publishing Company, I said, yes, I'll give you a book. Yes, I'll make it the best book I've ever written. And it'll be power thoughts from positive thinking the possibility of thinking, the power of thinking. Now, I knew it would be my best book, and it is. But I didn't read the fine print which said that when the book is in all of the bookstores across the United States, at the peak of the marketing season, I would have to go on the road and go to all of these major cities and sign books. I thought, my goodness, this is not a time to have autograph parties. Who's going to come to an autograph party when it's two above zero and it's starting to snow and they predict a blizzard any hour? had hundreds and hundreds of people had come out to this party in Cleveland and also in Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Boston. If you're watching, I would say, thank you for coming because first of all, you convinced me that what we're doing is terrific. It was all this week. Put the TV on, CNN. All the news, it was about Bobbitt or those who plotted to injure Kerrigan. Couldn't believe it. Or the latest on Michael Jackson. Or the Menendez trial. My gosh. That's the big news in America. Hey, America, you need this message. You bet you do. 
I'm predicting that we're just entering a new era in American life when Americans are going to discover something more important than the physical fitness kick we've been on for the past number of years. And I'm into the physical fitness kick. I was a runner when I was in my mid-40s, over 20 years ago. I was a runner on streets with my Adidas and my running suit when people looked, what's that nut doing running? So I'm into it. We realize and have learned something. If you don't eat the right kind of food, and if you don't exercise with the right treatment, you're going to pay a price, like it or not. Well, that's a fact. And culture has changed. And now it's not uncommon when you look at the menu. The waiter can tell you how much fat is in this piece that's on the menu. Culture is changing. And I predict that in the years and the decade to come, we're going to see the culture change as to how the American people look upon mental fitness and emotional fitness and come to the understanding that if you feed the brain junk food, you're not going to generate power. Junk food will not give your brain the impulses that will stir the emotions of joy. That's energetic. Hope, that's energy. Faith, that's vitality. Positive emotions produce healthy bodies. Mental fitness is a re requisite for physical fitness. Strength is power, and power comes through the right thoughts. And that's what my book's all about. And I'm traveling the country, bookstores, and boy, am I being told that I'm right on. For instance, the first person to stand in a line of hundreds of people, the husband, the wife, the six-year-old daughter, and a three-year-old boy, and the little boy waves at me, and they said, I'm sure. This positive thinking saved this little guy's life because 15 months ago, the doctor said he wouldn't live long unless he got a whole new heart and, at the same time, new lungs. And you're looking at him. He's got a new heart. He's got a new lungs, transplanted. And they're crying. Power thoughts are thoughts which say, what do I need to accomplish? How can I accomplish it? Don't tell me I can't do it. Oh, man. I'm looking at uh, three people. A husband, wife, a daughter of 14. Very simple looking people. I said to the little girl, hi. She says, I watch you all the time. It's good. Are you a possibility thief? She says, yeah. You got any goals? Yes, I'm going to become a medical doctor. Oh, what kind of a doctor? She said, I have a dream. Like, sure, you say I have dreams. I've got a dream. I want to be able to develop a process where we can transplant a fetus from an unwanted womb into a womb that wants a child. So lots of girls my age, they don't have Christian dad and mom like I do, and, and they have sex outside of marriage, and then they get pregnant, then they want to kill it. I'm going to transplant fetuses. Wow. Her dad says quietly, she's going to make it. She's straight A. Wow. I'm on the radio. It's a talk show by telephone. Heaviest talk show in the Midwest. First call, Dr. Shul, you teach positive thinking. I don't believe it. I said, oh, what's the alternative? Well, he said, I, I, I read, a, read into it for about a year when I got out of college. That was 10 years ago, and I, I gave up on it. Oh, what have you been doing the past nine years? He said, selling hamburgers. I said, so? So he said, I studied positive thinking for one year. That was 10 years ago, and where am I today?
I said, well, it isn't something you study for a year. It's something you live day by day, week by week, hour by hour, year by year, crisis by crisis, challenge by challenge, problem by problem, opportunity by opportunity. Hey! If you're not satisfied with where you are in life today, don't blame positive thinking. After all, you haven't been using it for the past nine years. <laughs> all you've done is prove that the alternative way of thinking doesn't get you anywhere. Wow. Positive thinking. Man. It really works. Power thoughts are thoughts that say, how can I take this impossible idea, like develop a new way of seeing the inside of the bodies? that I can see the difference between a blood vessel and a nerve and a, and a bone and marrow without cutting into the body. Impossible. How could it be possible? She stood in front of me. I think it was in Philadelphia, maybe it was Boston. The city's kind of blurred out. And I'll be on the road for this week and the next week and on into February. I hope I'll see you at some of these stores. But by golly, go out and buy that book. If you say you're promoting your own product, I have no apology for it. It's good stuff. America needs it. tired of listening to Bobbitt and the Assault on the Skater and the Menendez Boys and Michael Jackson. Innocent or guilty, that's not the point. The point is we're soaked in negative thinking. Negative thoughts don't invent new life-saving machines. I look at the girl in front of me. What city is this? I don't remember. She's beautiful, maybe 28 years old, very elegantly dressed, and her hair is blonde, it's very attractive. Her eyes look warm, honest, intelligent. She leans forward with the book. Sign your new book, Dr. Schuler. Thank you, I will. Then she looked and said, I have only one thing to say. When I first tuned you in a few years ago, I did not know who Jesus Christ was. I just didn't know anything about him, Dr. Schuler. You didn't know. But she said, you got me interested. And I read the Bible. Now I know who he is. Tell me. What's your impression of Jesus Christ? What do you know about him? From you, I've learned this about Jesus Christ. He tells me, I love you. And I always will. And then she was crying. She touched my hand and smiled and picked up her book and walked away like that. I wish I had time to exhaust the Bible verse that is my text this morning. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty. All of the promises of God in Christ are yes. God never gives you a no. If it's impossible, he'll say yes, but you gotta go back to school. Or yes, after you've disciplined yourself. Or yes, when you've paid the price. 
Today, I'm looking at you good people and saying you are supporting this ministry, and I have to thank you. Without you, we'd be out of business. And that's the truth. We're such a young church. This year, we're in the stage right now where I will go on national television, and without apology, but with real pride, I'm going to give everybody the opportunity to become a part of our team. I need you. And in America, needs our message. Boy, we need 30,000 people that will commit themselves to no less than $50 a month. That's what we call Eagles Club members. Last year we had 23,000. This year we need 30,000 or we won't even make it to the year-end appeal. We give to everybody who makes this encouraging gift a beautiful porcelain eagle. Call it the Regal Eagle. I'm asking you today to help me make 1994 the most impacting year for the message of the positive gospel of Jesus Christ. For this message is heard by more millions of people than can get it from anybody else in the whole world. And I'm going to fail without you. I say, God, will you give me success? And he says, yes, if the people will take you seriously. Yes, but they have to make commitments. Yes, after enough people join the Eagles Club. Thank you. Let's tell the world that Jesus Christ makes a difference. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. And now, Lord, I thank you. Beautiful things are happening. Right now, you are at work. You are in the minds of people and inventing new equipment, new machines to save lives. You are in the process of disseminating in the world not only new machines called MRIs, but you in this century and at this time taken the gospel of Jesus Christ through the influence of people like Norman Vincent Peale and Billy Graham and Fulton Sheen, and now through this telecast, you're sending this positive, encouraging, affirming, saving message to be heard by millions of people who still don't even know who Jesus Christ is, but they're going to find out this year. And when the millennium turns around, the news is going to be better. Hallelujah. Use us, God. Use us. Amen. Like an eagle flying, like an eagle flying, like an eagle running and not being weary. Walking and not fainting at all. Flying like an eagle, running and not being weary. The one who saves you will not let you fall. Flying like an eagle, running and not being weary. Walking and not fainting at all. Running and not being weary, the one who saves you will not let you fall. When your days go by at a crazy pace and your life seems so like a frantic race and you sometimes think you just can't stand the strain. A trifle threatens to blow your mind And relief is something you cannot find And you cannot get yourself together again You better stop, oh yes Let it all go for a while Do you need your strength to be restored? Close your eyes and see the vision.
vision in God's word for everyone who waits upon the Lord. It's a vision of flying like an eagle running and not being weary, walking and not fainting at all. Flying like an eagle running and not being weary the one who says you will God let you fall like an eagle flying like an eagle flying like an eagle Members of the Eagles Club, now in its 13th year, have been the wind beneath the wings of this ministry as each year begins. They are the support that is so necessary for the Hour of Power to continue to minister to those in spiritual need from all walks of life across the USA and in Canada too. You are invited to become a 1994 Eagles Club member today. Just look at the beautiful gift you'll receive for your participation. This porcelain eagle is of the highest quality. It's made exclusively for this ministry. Dr. Schuler calls it the Regal Eagle. It is stately, it is elegant, it is forceful, it is inspirational. When you pledge to give $50 a month for the 12 months of 1994, you'll receive this handsome porcelain eagle. Your gift may be made in one donation of $600, or you may send monthly gifts of $50 for 12 months. You can phone in your pledge or write. The address is Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. In Canada, write Robert Schuler, Post Office, Box 9050, Surrey, British Columbia. For your convenience, Dr. Schuler has this toll-free Eagles Club enrollment number that you may call. 1-800-94-USOAR. That's 1-800-94-U-S-O-A-R. If you need hope or encouragement, please call our New Hope Telephone Counseling Center. A trained and loving counselor awaits your call 24 hours of every day. New Hope is celebrating 25 years of continuous service, and we're very proud of our telephone counseling center. The telephone number is 1, area code 714, and the words New Hope. That's 1, area code 714, and the letters N-E-W-H-O-P-E. Or if you prefer the numbers, they're 1-714-639-4673. Today, as we begin our 25th year on television, we conclude our 1,253rd consecutive weekly telecast coming to you from the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California. We're thrilled that you've joined us. A free printed copy of today's message is available for you in a handy pocket-sized booklet. And for your video library, you may request a VHS color video of the message, hymns, and interview for a suggested donation of only $20. The address is Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. In Canada, write Robert Schuler, Post Office, Box 9050, Surrey, British Columbia. Thank you for watching the Hour of Power today. This global ministry of hope and encouragement is seen weekly throughout America, Canada, Australia, the entire European continent, Russia, the Commonwealth of Independent States, Latin America, South Africa, and the Middle East. I met Arnold, one of the many volunteers here at the Crystal Cathedral. Please join us again next week, and remember, God loves you, and so do we.